So this is, uh, while I'm here, so this is essentially the head that we will explore today. I think this head has a pretty good base, you know? Like, that's one of the great things about uh, sketching out heads really quickly, right? Is that if a head doesn't really work after you've spent a bit of time just sketching it out, just uh, throw it away. But once you do actually have a head, like in this particular case, where you're like, hey, actually, I think this head works pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. You know, then you haven't spent a lot of time. And then you can be like, okay, I will take this to the next stage. I will take this to the tertiary detail stage. So there are places where it's still very sketchy and stuff. Like there's still some places on the lips. I probably should have cleaned up the sketch a little bit more. But so on, so far, but so far I've been, uh, I've been able to build a lot of detail relatively quickly there, um, left and right, just by using some proper techniques there. And uh, okay, so so let's break this down. Last week we have taken a head that was sketched, and we converted that to subdivision mode. And that is what we done last week, right? And well, that's pretty much where we are today. This is pretty much where we are right here. So I have taken my sketch. I have done a Z wrap of it to go from sketching to subdivision. And now this head, because it is now in subdivision mode, it is now ready to start my tertiary details, essentially. We do have to polish the surface a little bit, okay? The surface is a little too noisy right now so that we can start to use this uh, to create our tertiary details. So there is a polish pass that needs to happen over the whole surface. Uh, before you can really move on there, you know? And so uh, those who know me essentially know that I like to use the... Uh, I like to use a lot of clay tubes for that specifically, you know? I'm more and more getting comfortable with the clay buildup that I feel more and more like using it within my workflow there. Um, but uh, for polishing, I still uh, largely default to using the clay tubes and having an embed set to zero there. If I want to polish this, you know, just like I had here, if you guys compare again, this is my rough surface. This is my polished surface ready for tertiary details. Uh, I want the surface to still be a slightly sketchy, slightly noisy. That is important because that will get me simply uh, a lot of uh, interesting texture to the, to the model for free afterward, right? So, you know, I don't want to kill all the detail there. I don't want to go over this with a huge smooth brush and just kill all, all the details, okay? Don't do that. But I do want to tone down a lot of these tertiary details, or, or rather a lot of the surface noise that I have here, right? So the process really is just, I take my clay tubes and I just go and I simply flatten the surface and I remove all, the, or rather a, a large part of the imperfections. But see, one of the things that I do pay attention to at this stage, okay? I still pay attention to try to keep a lot of that directionality in there that I really like. I'm gonna keep a little bit of it because else I would have to rebuild all of that and if I get rid of all the directionality that's in the surface right now, it's just gonna wind up, my surface is good, it's just gonna wind up looking like super bland after the fact. And make sure that, especially around the wrinkles, see, I really love this here. I love that my wrinkles are very sort of um, sort of uneven, okay? There's nothing worse than a wrinkle that you just take in like a damn standard brush. There's nothing worse than just taking a damn standard brush and just be like, there's a wrinkle, you know? That's not convincing. That doesn't look like a wrinkle. That's not appealing. I don't want to, like, you know? It's like, uh, as uh, I don't know if you guys watched uh, Prometheus, the uh, movie there, they said something in there that resonated with me really, really deeply, you know? They said, God does not work in straight lines. Now, whether you believe in God or not, that is a different question. But what is interesting is that when you look at nature, you're simply, you know, that applies to faces too. You simply do not have straight lines. All right, Ed Harris, right? If you, if you guys start to look at these, look at these little wrinkles here. Look at how like broken up all, all of this is. All the surface here kind of creates all this kind of weird shape to it, even here, right? Like. There's like a lot of little bumps. There's there's a lot of little pinches to the wrinkle and stuff. There's all this nice little noise in there for lack of a better term at this point. And so I like to keep a, a lot of that sketchiness left over from the sketching process because that is that. That is my broken up wrinkles that I'm getting pretty much for free. So I just want to show you guys essentially where I am with this at this stage here. So I spent about two hours on this uh, this morning. As you can see, you can actually build detail really, really quickly if you have some really good techniques there. So you don't necessarily need to spend days and days and days 
uh, placing every little detail left and right uh, manually there. In fact, I'm kind of allergic to that most most of the time. I just don't have time. I'm like, I'm sure, like it's fun to place certain details, and there are certain details, especially the skin pores on the cheek. You more or less have to place them manually because there's no way in ZBrush to uh, do a non-overlapping scattering of details. Fortunately, you have spray brushes, but we won't really use those because, uh, by and large, it creates details that overlap. And that is the worst thing you want to do for skin pores. It's going to look terrible, so don't do that. But um, so there are some things that you have to place manually. But for the most part, I mean, a lot of this so far up to this point is really just, well, it's just using a bunch of um, noise passes and other things to build detail really, really quickly there, you know. So uh, I can show you the layer stack then, because of course I use layers for this. So why don't we deconstruct the layer stack and we go back to our starting point then. So why don't we do that? So this is my layer stack. You guys can see I have, uh, well, actually there's only one untitled layer. So I've been fairly, I've been fairly okay with this so far uh, in terms of uh, naming my stuff there, you know? Okay, so you guys can see, first of all, I have this little, uh, the last layer down the stack, it's called bumps. Let me turn that off. You'll see it's very subtle. If I turn this off, it's just a bunch of little bumps left and right. Right, if I turn this back on, back off again, just some very tiny little bumps, nothing that special, just to break it up, just, just to get, add a bit more organicity to the surface. These are a few details I've added around the eyes. Um, I'm not very proud of them, but essentially like there is a point where I start to build uh, details that become a bit more localized in terms of position on, on the face there. So these are eye details. Uh, these are all procedurally generated. I didn't sculpt these. Um, there's another layer around the eyes. Once more to start to build a bit of wrinkles in there. Afterward, we get to a layer here that is wrinkles. Let me turn that off. And you guys can see these are simply wrinkles. I started to sculpt. Or I have started to deepen, rather. And a lot of these is simply using the uh, damn standard 2 brush which I really like to use to sculpt wrinkles. It's a fantastic brush. Not in your interface by default. You have to go grab it online. But if you just type, you know, ZBrush, damn standard dupe brush, damn standard two brush, you will find it. Uh, I believe it's free, so. Uh, grab it, add it to your library. It should be in the library by default. It's a great brush to use. Okay, yeah, so I started to build those wrinkles using that brush there. Then I have a layer here. Now that one's a bit weird. It's called FBM. It's called, uh, which means uh, fractal Brownian motion. If I turn it off, take a look, see the change on on the skin there. As I turn it back on and off, you guys can see that my skin starts to have a noisier appearance once I turn it on. Very very simple. Very nice way to just break up the skin a little bit there. Very very simply. After that, we get to a few details around the vermilion border of the lips that I have added using your Voronoi Pass. Once more, not the details I'm the proudest of so far, but as a first pass, I think it's largely where it needs to be. So not completely dissatisfied, but I'm looking forward to um, spend some time to do this even better there. Over that, then, we have this large Voronoi there. Let me turn that off and see what happens. You guys can see that it's mostly just wrinkles that are being built around the mouth and the lips there. Let me zoom in on this. Large Voronoi. So if you guys take a look at the lower lip there, maybe at this part here within the vermilion uh, borders, these sorts of things, as I turn this off, you guys can see that I have all these tiny little wrinkles that are there that simply disappear as I turn this layer off. There's a few around the nose, too. Large Voronoi Pass. And then we have a small Voronoi Pass. Let me turn it off, see what happens. You guys can see the skin here. If you take a look at the skin here, what is happening here, you can see this nice kind of Voronoi, very diffused looking sort of Voronoi uh, quality that the skin has as I turn this off. You can see that the skin becomes flatter and flatter there. So there's a, a Voronoi pass here to simply build a bit of organicity as opposed to the surface again. Let's turn it off. All right, we get to this one here. It is called pores. 
Now these ones I had to build them, had to place those manually there. So let me turn it off. And you guys can see before I added those pores to the cheeks. And after. Skin pores. We want to make sure not to, 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 to put them everywhere on the face because it shouldn't be everywhere on the face there. It should really just be in uh, certain zones, these enlarged pores, especially around the cheeks, some of the forehead, some of the, um, some on the chin as well, but certainly not everywhere. What I want you guys to at least observe, if there is one takeaway from this, okay, is that it is important to look at, uh, well, there's actually two takeaways, uh, but right now we're just talking about the first one here. Um, it's important to really understand that uh, tertiary details look very different based off the zone of the face that you are. So just get yourself some bunch of really high close-up, high-res images like these and really just start to observe for yourself. Uh, the kind of patterns that the tertiary details take in different zones. Then we get to our comedones. Our little black heads and white heads, okay? If I turn this off, you guys can see here, especially on the nose, that's often where they're more visible because the nose doesn't often have those enlarged pores that we have seen. They, the nose doesn't often have that. Um, the nose is a lot flatter than people think. Like People have tendency to put like a whole lot of like really heavy skin pores on the on the nose there, and that's a mistake. The nose is actually relatively uh, smooth. In most cases, there are, of course, exceptions there, but for most people, the nose is relatively smooth. And uh, you get uh, just these uh, tinier bumps, black heads and white heads there, but you don't have these enlarged pores that you have elsewhere most of the time. Anyway, so little comedones added to the skin. We have our milia around the eyes. All these little tiny little bumps that you guys can see here. I can turn this off. You guys can see that my familiar disappear. Next, we have our chicken skin, which is actually more in the next zone. So the big brother of the familiar there is our chicken skin. If I can zoom out and we can kind of look at it from here. You guys can see all this tiny little chicken skin effect that is kind of appearing here on the surface. So I can turn this off and no more chicken skin. And finally, we're up to the last layer, which is what I call directionality. Okay. Now this one's very, it's particularly interesting. Directionality, which you can see for the most part, I mean, it's for the most part, it's mostly sort of skin pore-ish, but it's skin pores that are stretched on one direction, okay? Like, if I kind of zoom in here on the cheeks, right? You guys can see that, yeah, sure, there's tiny little pores, but there's also kind of little streaks also on the surface here. So these are directional uh, lines on the surface, or directional wrinkles, or almost directional skin pores, almost. I just like to call it uh, directionality, because it helps to build a bit of directionality to the skin there. So let me just turn this off, and then you guys can see that we're pretty much back at our starting point. Once so I get rid of these, we're pretty much, pretty much back at our starting point. Yeah, directionality. I haven't talked about that so far, but that's very, very interesting, okay? Because this is the thing about tertiary details for a face, okay? The face is something that compresses and stretches, right? As we talk, as we have all these facial expressions that we do, skin builds directionality in its tertiary details, okay? There's a lot of, even of tertiary details beyond skin pores, if you guys start looking at literature and stuff that get aligned following the directionality of the skin. Uh, so there are uh, things, I can't quite point to things off the top of my head just like that, but there are even skin disease and these, these sorts of things that will align themselves quite naturally with the directionality of the skin. Because as we talk, as we compress the skin, you know, the details essentially often get compressed in one direction there. And that becomes very obvious the moment that we start looking at uh, details. So this is the second takeaway I want you guys to take away from this more theoretical section of the class then, is that skin details often have this directional appearance to them, okay? Let's go through a few of these uh, examples or a few of these images until we start seeing some clear directionality in there, okay? First of all, we have some here, right? If we just look at this random one, take a look at all these streaks here that we have on the surface there. It's all stretched in one direction. There's a bit of, of uh, compression right now that is happening because she, uh, she is activating her levator labii superioris elacae nasii, and therefore uh, there is a bit of compression on the skin. And because there's a bit of compression, we get tiny little wrinkles that form perpendicular to the compression. 
which is the same uh, as what we had said in the context of cloth and fold anatomy. Wrinkles, folds always form perpendicularly to the compression. And that is true for a face too. We also have some beautiful directionality here. If you guys take a look at this. See how all the details seem to be like somewhat aligned in one direction? Let's look at other examples of that. Take a look at this. Take a look at the directionality of the skin pores here and the tiny little wrinkles. Once more, directionality. Take a look at that. That's that's insane, right? This is crazy. This is what happens when you compress a forehead, when you compress your uh, corrugators. You wind up having all the skin of the forehead that gets compressed and starts to create these vertical streaks over the surface there. So this is beautiful directionality. This is on the side of a face. So this is uh, around orbicularis oculi in the region we call the crow's feet, right? Look at this beautiful directionality that skin takes in this particular zone, especially when it's compressed. But see, that's the thing. Even when the skin is not compressed, there is a bit of directionality that is left over in there because of, uh, you know, if you if you compress the skin so much, at some point it starts to become like almost memory folds, right? Like it starts to get built in there and you're sort of stuck with those afterward. Um, yeah, so directionality, super important, right? We want to try and capture that as much as possible on our surface. And that is the second takeaway from the theoretical portion of this class. Yeah, so I hope this was interesting that you have learned something from there. And uh, I will speak with you guys next time. I'll see you guys.